Sponsored by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. TrueTechTools.com. What's up, YouTube? I am going to do my best to try to knock out Project Rodenizer, the things that are left, the things that are wrong, and uh, we'll hope that we can get it all done and over with. Um, so yeah, we'll just get straight to it. Here we are in the attic. I don't have any light with me to be looking anywhere else, but I um, figured I'd look around here, show you what we've got up in the attic. What we're going to start off with is a baseline for the system performance. And uh, I forgot my thermostat screwdriver that I normally use. So, just stick my finger in there. We're going to get an air temperature a good distance from the unit on the supply side. And then come back over here and get an air temperature on the return side. And then, I thought I had taken static pressure previously, but I don't see my ports for that. So we're gonna pop a couple of holes. So we've got our static pressure on the return and the supply. My tablet's down under in the crawl space so I'm not gonna know what that is quite yet next we're gonna go down and hook up the pressure probes get a read on the superheat and subcool and then we'll switch out that pressure switch but I also believe that we're gonna have to deal with the expansion valve up here on this unit so We'll go through that, but I wanted to get a baseline first. All right. So, total external static is phenomenal at 0.42. Right now we've got superheat at 17. Subcooling's at 19. And that's a little high to me. I seem to recall a uh, target subcooling of 10 with a target superheat of 10 as well but I don't recall exactly I'd have to double check the paperwork to be certain on that at the moment I would think that we're a little overcharged let's just for fun see what the troubleshooting says it says dirty condenser or non condensables Hmm. I guess the other thing I could check would be the water pressure in and out and see if we're actually moving enough water. I know I had set it uh, initially, but I guess that would be one thing to double check. So I'm going to get set up for that and see what the water in and out looks like. So. I bought these adapters here that will take the I-manifold pressure probes and allow them to connect to this water needle for checking that PT port on a geothermal loop and uh, put some Teflon tape around them to get them to seal in and then it's just your standard needle for a geothermal water gauge and you can get a digital readout. The benefit of the digital readout is exactly this. You can see single pound 
operation. When I initially set it up, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the screenshots that I took at that point, but I showed a 1 PSI difference between inlet and outlet. And if I recall properly, that was accurate for the water flow, at least at that time. We're bouncing around a little bit, but generally speaking, we are like one PSI difference between inlet and outlet. Over here is our water solenoid and the valve that we are using to slow the water down. But wanted to get it checked and confirmed. All right, so we got about a two PSI difference now. What, one and a half to two. I'm gonna leave it like that for a little bit, see how it runs. So just by changing the water flow, we've lowered that head pressure. And with a geothermal heat pump, that's exactly what water flow is all about. It's basically the same concept as a air-to-air -air condenser with a dirty condenser. By changing the water flow, we got the head pressure to come down because now the condenser is getting more water through it and got my subcooling to come down because the pressure came down. Nothing else has changed except for water flow. Um, I'm going to let it run like that for a little while just to see how it goes and uh, maybe take out a little bit of refrigerant. But it does not appear that we've got a TXV issue. On the other hand, I think that the numbers that we were looking at previously when I had the service call are related to the um, first stage water flow. So everything was looking pretty copacetic. We were down on that uh, target head pressure zone and um, I heard the other unit come on and suddenly my head pressure went up and my subcooling went up of course but it appears that the other system has some play in the water flow and uh, may be part of our issue so as much as I want to keep an eye on the outdoor water or outdoor inlet water temperature um, I'm gonna hook up another pressure probe to see what the water pressure is with the other unit running and then shut the other unit down and see what happens to the water pressure because if we have flow issues we may have to visit the other unit and confirm that it actually is not overfeeding water pressure also. So we got a 42 PSI water loop inlet and if I remember correctly by the time I go to edit this video I may just be able to slide back but I believe that our water pressure was like 48 with the other system not functioning. So we've got a significant pressure drop when the second system kicks in. I guess we're going to move over to the other system and see what it's doing. Well, Mr. Woody Stokes from South Wake HVAC came by and uh, that dampened my video a little bit just because of having more fun talking to him but we got the drain pan up and uh, float switch put in for the drain pan put it together so that 
the unistrut for the unit is inside the drain pan. I knew I was going to need a larger drain pan than really necessary, but wanted to make sure my whole assembly was inside the pan. By having the unit right here lower than the duct, if there was a catastrophic water problem, the uh, water would never go out the duct because it should bleed out from the air handler long before that. Got a good idea of what's going on with the um, refrigerant charge. I don't think there's anything wrong with the expansion valve actually. I think it's a water flow problem. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit of that after I get it out of this attic. But um, at this point, everything is pretty decent. I'll probably come back tomorrow to finish up a couple of other minor things. Not doing too shabby right now. So I'm going to pack my stuff up and I'll give you a little bit of a rundown in the truck. All right, so here's a rundown. The old system, as was mentioned in previous videos, had both geothermal units in series. And when I put my system in, I switched it up to parallel. Um, previously, the both systems had one solenoid controlling the water flow and whether one system or the other came on, the solenoid would open and then if the other unit came on, it would stay open. And, you know, we don't have any data on that other than the poor performance that I had seen before I replaced the system. So when I went back, I put them in series. No, I put them in parallel and uh, we see a whole nother type of problem. Basically, when my unit runs, my performance is okay. When the other system kicks on, I suddenly have low water flow. My head pressure goes up, water pressure goes down, and um, my system no longer runs quite like it should. So, from this point, I'm thinking that we will either have to repipe the water lines from where I split them or increase the size of pipe from the well to the existing water lines and uh, increase overall flow for both systems that way. All right, so we're back at Rodenizer on Sunday afternoon. And I was thinking overnight and during the live stream that I ran last night um, that I never got around to balancing the water flow on this other package unit. So that's what we're gonna do they were balancing the water flow on the inlet side of the system and solenoid after the unit was what was controlling flow or shutting off the flow but to be able to get water on that coil completely and full pressure on the solenoid I want to add a ball valve after the solenoid so I've got the inlet to the solenoid shut off I've got both systems shut off and I'm gonna cut into the pipe here add a ball valve so that I can control water on the outlet one thing that I realized was that I had never actually balanced the existing system after I put mine in so I'm hoping that by balancing the water flow on this package unit the whole issue will be eliminated uh, because I never verified what the flow is on this at least with digital accuracy 
I used my analog gauge for the water pressure previously and it's not nearly as sensitive so I'm going to cut into the pipe add a ball valve and then we'll get a baseline on the first floor package geothermal unit coming. So while that is balanced or drying out the fitting there, I'm going to get set up to check this system and we'll check the water flow and the refrigerant charge. All right. So we've got inlet water labeled as ODA and outlet water as T2. And we're showing about a 11.6 degree temperature split. If we compare that to the documentation, that shows a three gallon a minute water flow. If we jump over to the I-manifold, we're showing 15 degrees of subcooling, 17 degrees of superheat, 20 degree split, and static pressure is at 0.4 inches of water total external. The manufacturer's data in the paperwork says at three gallons a minute, you're expecting a 10 to 15 subcool and a 10 to 15 superheat. Um, the fact that we're showing over target on the head pressure doesn't bother me if we're within spec for the package unit. So what we're going to do now is fire up the other system and see what happens when the other unit runs. At this point, I'm confident that we've got proper flow on the first floor package unit, and we'll see how running both systems affects that performance. Right. So we got the second system running, and our water split is basically 19 degrees. Right now it's exactly 19 degrees. And 19 degrees, based on manufactured data, is a water flow of two and a quarter gallons a minute. So what we're going to try to do is tweak open the water just a little so that when both units are running, we have about three gallons a minute on this one unit. And then I guess we'll have to go look at the other system and see where that one's at. Rather than using water pressure, we're using water temperature for this one. Our head pressure is definitely up, but we'll have something to compare to here once we get some more water in it. All right, so we got absolute confirmed water flow issues. We got the, uh, I say we because it was myself and Woody Stokes again. Um, we got the package unit basically dialed in to where it was to factory spec. Um, despite the head pressure being higher than our target, everything was within the data that the manufacturer gave. Um, fired up the other unit and 
tried to balance out our temperature split and we ended up with about 19 to 20 degree temperature rise on both coax coils. So inlet and outlet water was about 19 to 20 degrees when both systems were running. Um, at this point, that's gonna be the best that we can manage until we get higher flow for the system. We're gonna order some water pipe and pipe in um, back to the well. We're gonna have to do a little bit of trenching and then rebalance the systems. All in all, everything else is as expected for current conditions. Um, so anyway, that's the basic rundown from today. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. Peace. Check out iBleedR22.com, my new HVACR forum, and my website at www.hvacwithstevenreardon.com. Don't forget, you can use coupon code RARVID and get $10 off your purchase at truetechtools.com or the coupon code RARIDVM for $10 off your IDVM 510 meter. Thanks to the 100 Watt Vipers for allowing me to use their music also. You can search for my Facebook group at HVAC with Stephen Reardon or follow me on Twitter at Juvenile77. Thanks for watching.